A very good afternoon, Dr. Tsu. Wonderful to have you here. Uh, as you know, we're preparing a trip to Taiwan and we're especially interested in the technology, the digital size of the medical system. You have amazing amount of data. You have a lot of AI tools and we want to basically discover a little bit about that. Could you first introduce yourself very quickly, what your background, because that's fascinating. You do a lot of different fields and what your involvement has been with technology and AI. Yeah. Hi, Vincent. Nice to meet you. Uh, so I'm a medical doctor. I'm a neurologist. So my specialty in, in uh, medicine is about a stroke patient and uh, dementia and uh, some uh, Parkinson's disease and um, uh, migraine. So I also have the made a master degree for a double E and also the PhD for uh, chemical engineering. So I uh, have uh, been work in uh, National Institute of Health in the US uh, from 2018 to 2020 uh, and uh, learning the medical AI in NIH. So when I came back from uh, the US, I go to the medical center in the middle city, uh, middle area of Taiwan, the big city, uh, Taichung. I'm working in the AI center as a director. So uh, we have uh, several um, software as, as a medical device invention uh, uh, already approved by uh, US FDA and uh, uh, Taiwan FDA. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, we have uh, different AI tools for medical image. We can identify the uh, strong area uh, without the contrast injection. And mm -hmm. then we also have an AI tool for medical signal. For example, uh, we have the AI to detect the acute myocardial infection in the ambulance. Mm -hmm. And then we also have several large uh, language model uh, for patient and uh, for doctors and the doctors can use their voice to recall and uh, have some uh, EMR uh, uh, have some structured uh, recording for the EMR uh, system and also for nurses and uh, also we have some uh, genetic uh, AI tools so we can identify the disease before the disease onset yeah so let's talk about that a little bit more but first, let's go back to the Taiwanese system for a second, okay? Because you have 21 years of fantastic uh, EMR or EPG uh, information. So you have been very good in having structured data. Uh, you told me that in your hospital, you have a, um, you have a lab, a big, uh, big data lab since 2015 to basically find out, to, to get the right information out of that huge amount of patient information. Is that correct? Yes, so we have the EMR system uh, since uh, 2003. So we already have uh, 3 million uh, people recording in our hospital. And uh, uh, since uh, 2015, we have a big data center to collect all the information uh, with uh, structured data. So mm -hmm. we have uh, EMR and uh, laboratory data and also medical image. And yeah. uh, since uh, 2017, we have the AI center to uh, use this uh, big data to have some AI models and also do some inference in our daily practice. Yeah, so and that is uh, that is already since 2015 and that is big data and that is now more and more AI. You also have an AI, uh, you also have an AI center. Is that also in the hospital? Yes, so in the AI center, we have uh, 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 50 engineers in our AI center. Oh, so this, wow. uh, this is not for IT department, but only for the AI tools, uh, some innovation department, yeah. Yeah, now the reason why you have done this is of course the, 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 the Taiwanese uh, industry is very famous for its IT and its chips and it's everything very sophisticated, but it's also interesting that you have an, uh, an, 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 an population which is getting older, and that there's not enough doctors, right? I mean, I hear you have to be very, very practical and spend your time wisely and do your diagnostic, but because you don't have enough doctors, you don't have enough time. But what are the challenges of the healthcare system in Taiwan? Yeah, so maybe you know that in Taiwan, we have a national insurance. So uh, every patient, maybe 99% of people was covered by this uh, national health insurance. Yeah. But you know that uh, we have uh, maybe 2,000, uh, two, uh, sorry, uh, 300,000 uh, doctors in Taiwan. But mm -hmm. 
all, uh, some uh, department is uh, uh, st still uh, short of uh, doctors. For example, the uh, internal medicine, the mm -hmm. emergency department, and the uh, uh, pediatric. So because this is a very heavy loading uh, department in the hospital, and uh, the income is also uh, uh, a little bit lower compared with the other department. For example, you may know that for the cosmetic department, or yes. the uh, oncology, radiology is a higher income. Much so uh, but this is a very heavy uh, loading uh, department. So we need uh, more doctors, but uh, for now uh, we don't have uh, another, another enough uh, manpower. So we can use the uh, smart healthcare uh, tools uh, to yeah. facilitate this uh, uh, doctor's loading uh, to, yeah. not, uh, to reduce the loading, facilitate the, the efficiency. Yeah. Okay. Very good. And also the, the amount of money you spend, I mean, we do like 13% of gross national product uh, in healthcare. I think it's much lower in uh, Taiwan, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, uh, in I, I mean, the the, uh, the percentage of our national insurance is about uh, 4 to 5% of the GDP. So mm -hmm. it's uh, uh, much lower than uh, other uh, country, for example, maybe in Korea, maybe in Japan, it's a nine to ten percentage yeah. of the GDP. Yeah, unbelievable efficient, but it means you really have to be smart. Okay, so then mm -hmm. if we look at these uh, these AI uh, tools, you already told us, uh, of course, imaging. Everything started with AI and imaging. We're using that all the time, and that's basically distributing very quickly around the world. Um, but then if you look at, uh, if you said, do you have the signaling, uh, you have made some inventions, uh, for example, with the uh, ambulance, what kind of things do you measure and what kind, what, what kind of AI system, uh, what does the AI system do with what signals? Yeah, I think uh, uh, AI can be very useful for some emergency uh, condition. For mm -hmm. example, the acute myocardial infarction, uh, we know that it's, uh, we can compare the door to balloon time. So it means uh, when patient arrive the emergency department uh, ER door to the mm -hmm. uh, balloon uh, operation. So uh, we can shorten the uh, D to B uh, time using the AI. So we can uh, shorten the time from maybe 90 minutes to only 30 minutes using the AI detection. But also uh, pre-hospital stage is also some uh, time wasting. Well, the, uh, from according to the uh, article, so the pre-hospital stage uh, maybe take uh, two hours yeah, to make a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. But we have some AI uh, in the ambulance, so we can dictate the signal uh, when patient have some um, contact with the EMT uh, 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 person, so we can shorten the uh, two-hour uh, waiting time to only uh, ten minutes. We can yeah. transfer a patient yeah to uh, a hospital for further operation. Yeah, if we then uh, and there, there's a lot more things like that you told me. Let's talk to you about another subject. Um, administrative administrative uh, burden is very heavy. Always you have to always write down everything and then type in everything in the doctor. It's mostly not looking at you, but looking at the, at the terrible computer. You have mm -hmm. been very uh, active with voice recording for doctors and voice recording with nurses and, and also and that putting that in a structured way into the ERMR. How uh, did that develop and how normal is that at the moment? Yeah, <coughs> sorry. So uh, for the recording, so we can use only the voice to identify the uh, some uh, Talk, talk uh, uh, subject when patient talking to doctor. So uh, the we have two AI models. So the first one is a uh, uh, ASR system, so a, co a cost of, uh, speech automatic speech recognition. So the pa the doctor can uh, use their voice to talk the patient, and uh, we can transfer this uh, voice to some uh, article. So also we have another uh, large language model. We use uh, some like a GPT or some uh, like a Google uh, Gemini uh, to mm -hmm. transfer this uh, article to structure a uh, recording. So uh, in our hospital, so patient have uh, doctor and uh, the doctor have some conversation. So the doctor don't need to make diagnosis. So the uh, AI model can identify the conversation 
uh, content so they can identify the voice from doctor or from patient and uh, we have subjective finding and objective finding so the system will automatically have some uh, diagnosis and the uh, future treatment and the diagnosis plan so doctor can uh, have some uh, reference yeah uh, they can make diagnosis using the reference from ai models yeah so it's called soap you told me and soap is uh, structured uh, is structured, objective, subjective, subjective finding, objective finding, assessment, and plan. That's a nice way to put it. And then the plan and, and the assessment is generated by the AI or also by the doctor or in conversation, or do they have two opinions and is the system and second opinion, or is it now so good that the assessment and the planning comes mostly from the system? Yes. So we know that the uh, logic language model already passed the US MLE, the medical doctor uh, board test from the US. So we also test this logic model, med, uh, large language model in Chinese, in Mandarin. So yeah. it already passed the board uh, test in Taiwan. So even uh, doctors and the patient have some conversation in Mandarin. And uh, even in uh, Taiwanese, we can uh, do this uh, make this a uh, uh, very precise diagnosis yeah comparing with uh, other language yeah okay so that, yeah, you, that, you, yeah and that is is that an uh, designed in uh, is that designed in, uh, in 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 taiwan or is that uh, you know, for, for based for example on metpalm from google yes so uh, we have some collaboration with microsoft uh, use the gpt and also have some collaboration with uh, google use the metpalm so metpalm. Uh, yeah, so the system already uh, have some uh, example in the US, like uh, the Nuance have some collaboration with uh, OpenAI and the Microsoft. But uh, we use this uh, in uh, Taiwan, uh, so uh, the system can understand Mandarin and uh, even some uh, language from South Asia, like uh, uh, Indonesia or Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So this uh, system can be applied in uh, the uh, hospital in uh, South Asia and in Taiwan. Okay. And uh, so, um, yeah. So, and how normal is to use? Is it to use that? Is that is is it only used in a couple of places in Taiwan, or is that already uh, becoming normal? How how special is that? Uh, I think more and more uh, hospital can use this system because uh, I'm I was in the medical center in uh, Taichung, but now I'm in another institute named. Uh, industrial uh, Technology Research Institute. So mm -hmm. this is the research institute in Taiwan. So we have some collaboration with uh, uh, maybe 20 health medical center in Taiwan. And uh, we are uh, working on this, uh, we are promoting this uh, system to this uh, 20 medical center in Taiwan. Okay. What is the future you think of AI? What will it do? What will it do with the doctor, the, the role of the, so first, Let's talk about what is the future of AI in the in the Taiwanese healthcare system in mm -hmm. five years. I think AI can uh, uh, reduce the manpower uh, uh, deficient uh, the problem uh, in Taiwan can reduce uh, the uh, need for manpower in Taiwan, uh, mm -hmm. not only in medical doctor but also in nurses. So more than more nurses uh, is uh, going to also like uh, maybe cosmetic uh, clinic, but not in hospital. Yeah, so we need more and more nurses uh, in Taiwan. So mm -hmm. I think uh, the, the first day we want to reduce the uh, manpower, uh, the lack of manpower in Taiwan. And in the second uh, step, uh, the AI can help doctor can make diagnosis in hospital, but not, not only in hospital, but also in the countryside. So mm -hmm. we have another plan for family doctor uh, platform. So uh, we have some uh, 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 technique for uh, to do the telemedicine. Yeah. So uh, doctors, uh, uh, general, uh, general uh, practice doctor in the uh, mountain area uh, can use this uh, telemedicine technique yeah, to yeah. Co uh, communicate with the uh, doctor in hospital. And yeah. in the third step, we have some AI uh, tools for long term care. Uh, you know that uh, Taiwan is more and more aging uh, uh, country. Yeah, for now we have uh, uh, the percentage of a patient uh, more than 65 years old is about uh, one third, one fourth. 
so it's uh, yeah. uh, twenty five percent. So it's a age uh, society in Taiwan. So yeah. the long term care uh, need is more and more uh, will be more and more important in Taiwan. So I think in and the third, what do you do especially uh, for older people with AI, what can what can AI do for the or the treatment of older people? Yeah, for uh, for example, we can uh, make an early diagnosis for some uh, degenerative uh, disease. For example, for dementia, uh, dementia or for Parkinson, well, we have some uh, AI for like a gait identification. So uh, we have a walkway. So when patient walks through this walkway, we have some gait analysis. So identify if the patient have uh, Parkinson disease or dementia. Mm -hmm. So patient don't need to come to a specific uh, clinic for the diagnosis. So uh, they just need to walk. Uh, in the walkway in hospital so they can make a diagnosis yeah so this okay. is early action but also we also have this uh, uh precision uh, treatment so for different kind of uh, degenerative disease we have specific uh, drug for this patient and for long-term care we have some uh, home care device for example we have uh, we cooperate with uh, like a fitbit or a google watch so we can identify some uh, vital sign uh, change or some uh, falling at home. So patients don't need to come to hospital. They can have some uh, hospital at home uh, service. Yeah, so they can have some long-term care at their, uh, in their uh, own house, yeah. but not, uh, in hospital. And that is, of course, telemedicine. Uh, that's that's normal. Uh, over there. Everybody's using that. But also the, the specific role of AI is this with the diagnosing. Let me ask yes. you two more questions. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you think of the autonomy of the doctor? I mean, is the AI system is the doctor going to be an input <laughs> input for the for the system and it makes the diagnosis, or is the system an helper of the doctor? What is happening with the autonomy of the doctor with this new AI sophistication systems? Yeah, I think for now the uh, autonomy is uh, uh, only for doctor. So in Taiwan, only doctor can make diagnosis and the treatment. So uh, AI is just a, a, an assistant, but not he can, uh, it cannot control this uh, diagnosis or treatment plan. Mm -hmm. uh, but for but in the future, I think AI will um, become more and more uh, smart. So mm -hmm. a doctor can have some uh, uh, or patients can have some second opinion from uh, AI tools. Yeah, but uh, I think uh, we we will have some uh, future plan. Yeah, for doctor can have some collaboration with uh, the AI. So uh, in the future, yeah, doctor will have more and more uh, connection with the AI tool. Yeah. Okay. And then um, the system is trained on data and is trained on purposes, on goals. Uh, we are now thinking about, hey, if we have all these AI systems, they slowly start taking decisions, their second opinion, they start to they become more smarter and they basically become strong second opinion. And then the doctor has to, at a certain point, has to say, well, um, we, uh, the, I am not of the same opinion as the AI system because in, you know, you, slowly it's, an, it's a way that, that it's changed. Um, is, that, is that something which is worrying doctors or is everybody so happy that because they don't have enough people that they say, hey, we can use all the help we can get? Yeah, so you know that there's a news. Yeah, maybe uh, one or two months ago that a, a very rare disease uh, child have some diagnosis. Yeah, uh, uh, this uh, child already have some uh, visit with maybe uh, more than ten doctors in the U.S. Mm -hmm. But the uh, uh, doctor can make a, a very uh, correct diagnosis. But the uh, uh, the mother of this child has a tragedy about the symptom. And the uh, tragedy make a very precise or correct diagnosis. So I think this is a very good e example. But I think on the other side, because uh, in the medical school, uh, our teacher tell us that when you hear the uh, horse, uh, the the horse uh, song, you can think the horse, but not the zebra, because zebra is very rare, and uh -huh. the horse is more common. So. When a, doc, a patient come to our uh, clinic, so we will make diagnosis based on the common condition, not the real condition. And the most of the uh, uh, the case, we our diagnosis is correct.
but in the very rare case, the patient has very, very rare disease, uh, we must think about the real uh, condition. So in this situation, I think doctor can cooperate with uh, uh, AI. So AI will, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> AI will more focusing on real condition, but doctors will uh, based on the common condition make a diagnosis. So we can cooperate with AI to make the very uh, precise or correct uh, diagnosis based on a different condition. Yeah, so that's a very rational answer, and that's very that's correct, of course. But I'm saying this whole AI, uh, this whole AI uh, tool sets, uh, does it worry people in the healthcare world, or are they very excited about it, or is it a combination of everything? How much do yeah. people, how much are people afraid to be replaced by you know just some smart machine? I'm very excited, but I must say a lot of doctors, my colleagues, is very worried because mm -hmm. one of the uh, director of our cardiology uh, once tell me that uh, he don't like my AI tools, yeah, because my uh, when a patient has a acute myocardial infarction. So medical doctor, uh, his student will check the AI diagnosis, not the ECG signal, uh, the, the raw data. So he don't like my AI. Yeah, <laughs> but I say yeah. you should cover, you should cover the answer from AI. You should make the uh, students read the raw data by themselves. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey, and the system is it trained to optimize for money? Uh, as many healthy years as possible to optimize the amount of income from the hospital or to minimize the amount of cost for the government. You can train the model in different ways. How is that decided? Uh, because in Taiwan, actually, we will not get some payment from uh, the, global, the national global insurance. Yeah, uh, the, the insurance didn't pay for AI. So, uh, but uh, in our in uh, in our hospital, so we can say that the patient, the doctor can see more patient and then make more diagnosis using some uh, AI tool to make their work more efficient, but not direct directly from the uh, the payment from the global insurance. But okay. we try to uh, to solve this problem. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to do all these discussions when we arrive in October. I'll be visiting in June. I hope I'll have the chance to uh, meet you in person. That will be, yeah. and I will have a little bit more smarter questions to ask you and to get a little bit more involved in it. And would yeah. you be willing to talk to our doctors in October when we come with 30 doctors to uh, to visit your uh, country and and, your, and study your uh, study your system? Would you be willing to share that with us? Yeah, sure, sure. I'm looking 